guys, you, you have to quit nicotine. Smoking, electronic cigarettes, vaping, whatever you wanna call it, you have to quit. Don't just take my word for it. You know, today we're gonna go over the data to suggest why it's harmful for you, um, especially the effect that it can have on your dick, your erectile function, your sexual function, in some cases, even your testosterone, and why it's so important, especially when we're talking about the context of PE. Like I said, today we're gonna to be talking about nicotine. Uh, unfortunately, it's more prevalent than ever. Part of this is from the rise of electronic cigarettes um, and vaping, especially in teens, but also cigarette smoking is still very, very prominent. And um, oftentimes actually starting with vaping leads to cigarette smoking later in life. So today we're gonna discuss why you need to stop this. And so everybody knows that cigarettes are harmful. And so we're gonna start with the data based on cigarettes uh, because this is the most conclusive for sure. The first paper I'm gonna talk about was a systematic review that they looked at discussing the exact effects that smoking in particular has on erectile function. So as men, um, they wanted to see, they wanted to review all of the papers and say definitively, what are the effects on erectile function and sexual function in men? And so they concluded that smoking is strongly associated with erectile dysfunction. There's many different mechanisms for this. So number one is the endothelial impairment. So the endothelium is the lining of the vascular cells. It's, it's important for not only releasing nitric oxide, which if you saw my video on citrulline and nitric oxide, you know why that's important for erectile function, um, but also just normal vascular function, the ability to dilate. And so if your endothelial function is disrupted, especially in the penis, you're not gonna be able to dilate and you're not gonna be able to have good erections. Decreased nitric oxide availability like I just said, increased oxidative stress. So oxidative stress in a nutshell is basically when you have harmful chemicals, radiation, whatever it may be in your body, it can create these free radicals which can actually damage your tissue. So it's a way of saying increased tissue damage, and you can have atherosclerosis. What that is is basically plaques that line the arteries um, and it limits blood flow, and so you can have impaired penile uh, arterial flow. And so all of those things are the reasons why you can have erectile dysfunction. Not only do they say that if you smoke, you can have erectile dysfunction, but also just being in the presence of secondhand smoke is associated with increased erectile dysfunction. Interestingly, what they also showed is that people who smoke have a higher prevalence of low libido. And conversely, if you stop smoking, you can actually have a re reversal of that uh, low libido, so your libido will increase. So people who smoke have worse erections and they have a decreased sex drive. I will say importantly that it is not just um, like the nicotine that's in smoke that, that causes issues or the carbon monoxide for that matter. There's a lot of additives, there's tar, there's chemicals that those in themselves have been in fact associated with decreased erectile function, free radical damage to the endothelial cells, all of that. So let's put this to rest. Smoking is bad, the end period for erectile function, okay? Now let's move into talk about vaping and electronic cigarettes because when I made my comment about nicotine before, I had all these guys sounding off in the comments, there's no evidence that e-cigarettes are bad, blah, blah, blah. So let's address that, okay? This study looked at males who were over 20 and their effect on erectile dysfunction and the use of electronic cigarettes. And so what they found is that the daily e-cigarette users were more likely to report erectile dysfunction than the ones who had never used it. Also, they did what's called a restricted sample where instead of looking at the entire population, they looked at just the population who had no underlying cardiac abnormalities or heart disease or diabetes or anything like that, just the healthy population. And it still found that even in this restricted sample, daily use of electronic cigarettes led to um, higher rates of erectile dysfunction. So this study shows erectile dysfunction, even with electronic cigarettes. There's a couple things that were pretty interesting in this study though. Number one, they showed that if you use electronic cigarettes, please exercise because exercise can actually have a limiting effect on erectile dysfunction. And once again, they concluded that electronic cigarettes are associated with erectile dysfunction, independent of age, cardiovascular disease, and other risk factors, okay? So yes, electronic cigarettes are bad. There's also other studies that have given conclusive evidence that nicotine is in fact harmful for your body. So take this excerpt here from one of these review papers. It said, nicotine prevents vasodilation of the blood vessels and the refill fluid can also lower testosterone levels by up to 50% as a result of its impact on the steroidogenesis pathway. So what is the steroidogenesis pathway? Well, 
It's basically how your body converts things like cholesterol or fats to things you need like testosterone or estrogen. And so what they're showing is that the refilled fluid that is in those electronic cigarettes can actually impair that pathway and cause a reduction in testosterone. So not only is it harmful as far as the effect on the limited ability of vasodilation, but it can also decrease your testosterone levels, okay? So that's specifically with looking at electronic cigarettes. Now let's just look at nicotine in general. This first study that we're gonna look at is what's called a, a dose escalation study. And so they took smokers, yes, it's smokers, but the cigarettes were identical. The only thing that was different in this study was they were looking at high doses of nicotine versus low doses of nicotine and monitoring sexual response while watching porn with actually like probes and electrodes on the penis to detect basically how the, the penis distends due to sexual activity. And what they saw was that when you have the high nicotine containing cigarettes, there was a decreased rate of penile diameter. And so keep in mind, this was, you know, patients would smoke these high nicotine cigarettes and then immediately go watch porn with probes on. But compared to the low or the no nicotine um, control, there was a significant reduction in the ability of the penis to dilate. So once again, the vasoconstriction. Not only that, but high nicotine caused more vasoconstriction and an increased heart rate compared to the no nicotine or the low nicotine, okay? And then here are a few excerpts from a few review articles for the people that wanna argue that, oh, nicotine's not that bad, okay? Abundant evidence that nicotine prevents vasodilation of blood vessels and reduces blood flow, which impairs normal erectile function and negatively affects male performance, okay? And here's another excerpt that shows that nicotine is responsible for the physiologic changes that contribute to the development of erectile dysfunction. Very interesting uh, article that one of the users posted about um, the role of nicotine in angiogenesis, which is actually pretty intriguing if you look at it. So what is angiogenesis? It's basically increased vascularity to the tissue. So the argument was is that nicotine actually improves angiogenesis. Well, yes, but mostly no, okay? So when you look at the actual studies in the acute setting, so a small, or basically a, in a, an isolated exposure to nicotine, so you don't smoke at all, you don't use nicotine, then you take a hit of an e-cigarette, and then they look at actually the markers from angiogenesis, and you can actually see a brief uptick in that. So it can actually arguably promote angiogenesis. The problem is that is only in the acute setting, meaning only when it occurs right there. When you're looking at it in the chronic setting, chronic nicotine treatments impair angiogenesis, okay? So it impairs it in the chronic or long-term. So if you're smoking e-cigarettes or vaping every day, you're going to impair that angiogenesis. It is not going to benefit. In this same review article, they do make an important note that, you know, compared to smoking, Yes, electronic cigarettes are far healthier, but there's undeniable evidence that the nicotine and the electronic cigarettes themselves contribute to cardiovascular events and accelerated atherosclerosis, okay? So they are not healthy. It's a great option compared to cigarettes, but it is not healthy. And I, you know, I'm not gonna belabor other points in here, but you know, when you're exposed to nicotine, cigarette smoking, there are other changes that occur in your body like chronic hypertension, changes to the coronary arteries that constrict, um, changes to your heart rate. Um, and so you can develop literally cardiovascular disease, which of course is going to reduce your uh, blood flow to your penis. It's one of the major causes of erectile dysfunction in aging men is um, atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease amongst diabetes and hypertension, which is also caused by chronic nicotine abuse. Chronic hypertension damages the endothelial cells and the endothelial lining, especially in the sensitive structures of the penis, leading to erectile dysfunction, okay? So, Nicotine is bad, smoking is bad, electronic cigarettes are bad, vaping is bad, okay? So what does this mean for PE or for, the, for enlargement potentials? Well, so if you are limiting your blood flow, damaging your endothelial cells, you're increasing the risk of chronic damage, okay? When you have chronic damage over time, that leads to fibrosis or loss of penile function, basically your dick becoming non-functioning, chronic erectile dysfunction which is exactly why I advise you to use a supplement like a citrulline-based supplement or even in some cases microdosing agents like Viagra or Cialis to prevent the endothelial damage and even reverse it, okay? And so when you decrease that blood flow from nicotine exposure, you're increasing your risk of injury, 
you're, you have worse recovery because you don't get that healthy blood flow. You have a higher risk of fibrosis and permanent erectile dysfunction. And also there's a chance that you're gonna get slower gains because you are not getting that healthy blood flow. When you go to sleep and growth hormone is released, that growth hormone is not getting to your penis as it otherwise would because of that reduced blood flow. And of course, if you have worse erectile um, functioning, worse erectile quali uh, erection quality, then you're gonna have a, literally a smaller dick because you're not maximizing your potential because of that erectile function. What are the conclusions from this? Stop smoking, please. I know it's not easy, there's support groups, there's medications, um, but you have to stop smoking, okay? If you're on e-cigarettes, you need to stop smoking as well. Chronic exposure, especially if you're a younger guy, decades and decades of nicotine exposure is not good for your cardiovascular system or for your penis. Both can not only affect erectile function, but they can also reduce libido. There's several studies showing that literally both test, that both cigarette smoking and electronic cigarettes reduce your testosterone levels, okay, and reduce your libido. The good news is, is that there's plenty of studies showing that you can actually reverse the effects of the damages that you're doing if you stop smoking and stop abusing nicotine. You can reverse it if you stop, so there is reasons to stop now. And there is a benefit to the least amount of nicotine as possible. So please don't smoke cigarettes. That's the absolute worst thing you can do. Um, kind of the, if you have to get your nicotine exposure and you're vaping, you know, just try to minimize the amount of nicotine in there and ideally just get off of it. Even if you have to just use kind of the, the flavored vape with no nicotine, that'll be an easier way to quit by transitioning down the nicotine. Are there guys who have still made gains while they smoke? Yes, absolutely. It's not like you are not going to make gains if you continue to smoke, but you're greatly increasing your risk of just at baseline of erectile, permanent erectile dysfunction and fibrosis when you get older due to the damage to your cardiovascular and endothelial cell system. Um, but you're also increasing your risk of injury if you're, if you're currently engaging in PE. And so, you know, do your own research, form your own conclusions. This is my analysis of the data. Um, don't smoke, don't use nicotine, okay? Um, if you have questions about injury uh, or injury rehabilitation, especially from a penile perspective, you can check out my Patreon, which is uh, Doc Hink. Um, you can also check out leviathansups.com. Uh, we have an excellent uh, citrulline-based pre-workout, which can reverse that endothelial damage that I was talking about. Also, check me out on R Getting Bigger. Um, do your own research, form your own conclusions. I'll catch you on the next one.